In question 1 of this paper, we are told that a crate of mass 800 kg is lifted vertically at a constant speed by the cable of a crane. We are required to find the tension in the cable and the power applied to the crate in increasing the height by 20 meters in 50 seconds. Now let's look at the details which are provided in the question. First of all, we are given that it's a crate and its mass is 800 kg and it's moving at constant speed and it's connected to a crane. So you can have a simple diagram here where you have that to represent the crate and of course there is this crane here that can be the crane. It's under tension so we are going to indicate the tension in the crane with an arrow pointing upwards and we put a T there. This means that the crane is pulling the crate upwards with a force equal to the tension in the crane. The mass of this crate is 800 kg so we can calculate its weight. Remember the weight of an object is given by the mass in kilograms times the gravitational field strength in newtons per kilogram. So the mass is 800 kilograms. The gravitational field strength is 10 newton per kilogram. And that gives us the weight of the crate to be 8,000 newtons. Because of course the kilogram and the kilogram will cancel out giving us the weight to be 8,000, I mean 8,000 newtons. That is the weight. Now this crate is moving upwards at a constant speed and because the speed is constant, the acceleration will be zero. That is why they gave us this word here constant speed. It means that the acceleration of the object is zero. Now why is that important? It is important because we want to resolve upwards where we do the resultant force upwards is equal to the mass times the acceleration upwards. Because we are resolving upwards we take the force which is pointing upwards to be greater than the force which is opposing it. So in order to get the resultant force upwards, we do T minus the force which is opposing. It's equal to the mass which is 800 times the acceleration which is zero. Of course, you, you can see that this one is going to give us zero. That implies that T minus 8000 is zero. Therefore, T is equal to 8,000 newtons. And that is the tension in the cable. Let's look at part 2. Of course, this is part 1. In part 2, we are required to calculate the power applied to the crane of course, by the motor, which is pulling that crane upwards. Power is equal to work done over time. So there are two ways of calculating the answer to part two. We can go ahead and say this work is force times distance. Of course, divide by T. The force is 8,000. The distance moved is 20 meters and to move that distance it took 50 seconds. And this is going to give us 5 here, 5 here we are going to get 1600, 1600 times 2 we are going to get 3200 watts or 3.2 kilowatts. Although this is optional. 
By the time you've written these, you've already arrived at the required answer. This is just uh, optional when you want to convert power from watts into kilowatts. We just need to remember that 1000 watts is equal to 1 kilowatt. And therefore, if we are given power in watts, we just need to divide it by 1000 to convert it into kilowatts. But like I've said, this is purely optional. Now, the second method stems from this equation at this point. At this point, you can see that so or power is equals to force, which is this one. Distance divided by time is actually speed, V. This equation where we multiply the force by the speed is only applicable in two situations at an instant of time or where the velocity of the object is constant. And we, we can see this object is moving in a straight line with constant speed. So that means that the velocity of the object is constant. So separately we can work out the speed because the, the speed of the object is going to be equal to distance divided by time. And this one will be a distance of 20 meters divided by 50 seconds. And if we substitute these values the way they are, 8,000 times that speed of 20 divided by 50. Of course, we can go ahead and work out this one and we are going to get 0 0.4. But I didn't want to do that because I want to show you that the, the final substitution is the same. Look at the, what we've done here and what we are just about to do here. It's exactly the same. So this expression will give us a power of 3,200 watts.